I'm worried about the future of Egypt right now. As linked below, there's an article that talks about this if you want further clarification beyond what I give here. But we have a situation in Egypt where there was a revolution part of the Arab Spring, and a lot of people know about that, I'm sure. The media has been occasionally talking about it since, but I feel that not as many people have been following the effects of the revolution as much as they followed the revolution. And I want to bring up a little bit about what's going on there and why I'm worried, and why we all might want to be worried, or at least checking this out and seeing what's going on. See, in Egypt, they have an elected government now, which really is a historical significance because pretty much throughout the totality of Egyptians' history, they have been dominated by a non-elected official in one form or another, whether it be the ancient pharaohs, who were the god people, more or less, to military rule, which, their own version of the gods, right? You know, they have the guns. And finally, they have what can mostly be called an election. They have an elected government now. It had its problems, yes, but it's an elected government. Now, the real problem here is the military, because, well, like I noted, they've been dominated throughout time by non-elected, powerful central authorities, and the military has been the most prevalent of them all for the very long time, and they don't want to give up their power. They have an entrenched position in their society where the military is basically law, at least informally, what they want happens. And with this elected government coming, they took steps to make sure this would not be violated. They took these steps by writing a new constitution, pretty much, where they took most of the power that was originally envisioned for the president into their own hands. And they pretty much made the government not fully a puppet government. It has power, but it's a rubber stamp government in the sense that the military has more or less caged it so that what they want will happen one way or the other. They have their methods now, and they have the ways in the Constitution to make it happen. And of course there's that promise that, oh, there will be another Constitution written in the future. But that's what a lot of dictators always say is, there are reforms coming, right? We'll work on this maybe next election, maybe I'll have elections in the future, but there will always be delays, there will always be something that happens, a new terrorist threat, or there, there's too many people protesting and I don't like it, so we got to delay things for whenever I feel like it. Pretty much it's gone, right? The Jedi mind trick. You do not want elections. And the Egyptian people do, though. And that's the problem. They've been going, oh, no, no, no elections. Hand wave, right? But people are like, no, no, we're done now. We, we had a revolution and we kicked this guy out and we're, we're rolling still, right? So there's a lot of people on the streets now who are dissatisfied. And let's talk really quickly about who won the election, first of all, because that too is interesting. The leader that they elected is a member of the Muslim Brotherhood. That's a big thing they elected a Muslim leader. However, here's the thing, he's a Western-educated moderate, at least by his, he believes in an Islamic government, but at the same time, he believes in the idea of representing his people, at least that's what it seems like. I can't make assurances, obviously, I don't know the man, but based on his record and his education and what's been said about him by many people, it seems like he is a moderate Muslim, and that's a good thing, very good. I just, as I noted, I'm worried about Egypt's future, and for one, I see if the military pushes him further and further out of power and attempts to limit him, I fear that there will be a backlash from the Muslims of that nation who will see this, and perhaps rightly so, as a pushback against any Muslim authority. The military wants to keep the Muslims out, is what I'm afraid it might look like. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it isn't. But if that's what happens, where it ends up being a conflict between the military shadow government and a Muslim-dominated normal government, I fear it will become very bloody very bloody. And another reason I'm very much afraid is we have a very vulnerable government there. It's fresh. It's new. It's just come into being a democratic government. And if some event happens, like a large terrorist strike or a protest goes too far out of hand and becomes too bloody, well, the military pretty much has the authority, and I'm almost certain would do it, where they declare martial law, dissolve like parliament, basically, and take full power again under the necessary protections for the people. I just, I see this as this is not over. This revolution hasn't even really begun yet because the power struggle just changed faces. Now it's no longer Hosni Mubarak, sure. But now there's a military shadow government and the people are seeing it more and more and they're realizing that the military is not out for them. Because at one point, the military had a reputation for being the protector of the people, even against the totalitarian government there. Sometimes the military would refuse to do things, that sort of thing, but no longer. They're changing from champions to dictators. And when a group of dictators stands in the way of people who have freshly tasted democracy, 
it's going to get bloody. And that's why I'm worried. But what do you think?